Hello everyone, this is Mamta Das, a PhD scholar in NIT Trichy, India, in the field of bioinformatics with machine learning. Today, I will discuss the prediction of subcellular localization of E. coli bacteria using machine learning classifier. And uh, this is the table of content. Let's get started with significance of protein subcellular localization, that is PSL. What is PSL? PSL is the prediction of where protein reside in a cell. It is a multi-class classification problem where the protein sequence is assigned to one of uh, 4 to 16 compartments. Here we can see the general cell structure of different compartments of eukaryotic cell. And this protein subcellular localization uh, determines the environments in which proteins operate. They control how proteins work by deciding who can interact with them. Now in our study, we have used uh, equally data to guess where this protein are located inside the cell. There are the compartment of E. coli bacteria here. Now why we choose this E. coli bacteria as a data set? This E. coli is a bacteria that commonly lives in the lower intestine of one blooded organism including human, animals and in fact they are the part of our normal bacteria flora. Most of the E. coli strain have uh, beneficial uh, functions. For example, they may prevent the establishment of harmful bacteria in our intestine. However, there are some pathogenic E. coli. This means that they can uh, cause human illness. Among these pathogenic E. coli, there is a, uh, one group of E. coli strain that are capable of producing toxin. And this group of uh, strain is known as the verocyte toxin uh, producing E. coli or we can say the VTEC. And other one is the SIGA toxin producing E. coli, better we can uh, say S. -tech. Now, the infection in human with a VTEC leads uh, to mild to bloody diarrhea. However, also more severe complication can occur, which may potentially uh, even lead to the kidney failure. Now, consumption of conda contaminated food or contaminated water also may contact with the infection by contact with infected animals and close interaction with the infected humans. Now this VTEC is found in the vegetables and fruits and uh, in food and uh, in dairy product of uh, made uh, um, from the raw milk. Now what can we do in order to protect ourselves from these pathogens? Uh, it is uh, advised that the refrigerate the food uh, it is also advised to wash the hand and also vegetable fruits and the cutting board and the knives which are uh, when uh, we are preparing the food and based on this advantage and disadvantage of E. coli bacteria uh, I choose it as a uh, my data set now this uh, slide includes the related work of uh, five most recent work including mine this one the last one now the error at all have um, has been uh, chosen the data set EP short TV with these machine learning models and some uh, uh, compartment of the cell like cytoplasm, cytoplasmic membrane, periplasm, outer membrane and the extracellular region and cell wall. Likewise, Musles and Chang et al and Garapati et al all choose different types of data set and different type of machine learning algorithm and uh, the different uh, numbers of um, compartment in the cell. And we choose the equally data set uh, with uh, nine uh, machine learning model like logistic regression, linear discriminant analysis, KNRS neighbors, classification and regression trees, knife based SVM, linear SVM, extra tree classifier and the random first classifier. And we choose the uh, total eight uh, compartment in uh, of uh, E. coli bacteria. Now in proposed methodology, first we will discuss the data set. The data set is uh, taken from the UCI machine learning repository and the data set have 336 instances and the seven features. Here we can see all the eight uh, locations of the E. coli bacteria and these are the count. And this table define the uh, seven features and uh, statistic summary of the seven features with the uh, locations. Now coming to the models, we have already mentioned these uh, nine models we have used. And these are the parameters we have used to um, get the result or accuracy of our work. And to comparison uh, 
for the comparison we have used four uh, performance metric accuracy precision recall and f1 score and here we can see this tp tn and fp fn all, uh, all are the usual meaning and we have mentioned under this note now these are the result we got from the uh, different um, machine learning model and if we see carefully we can see the asbm got the maximum accuracy uh, than the other and uh, we can say all the model are working well but uh, in comparing basis in case of precision recall and f1 score the lda got the, the highest result and this asbm is near to this lda because if we choose the three digit under this point we can carefully check this asbm and lda got the highest result than the others now these are the visualization of the different uh, result in different model with this data set and here also we can see this SVM and this LDA got the highest in the accuracy decompression in score and this uh, graph is showing the execution type of different classifier and we can see this the linear SVM uh, has been taken the maximum uh, time to execute and the, the second most is random forest and the third one is the LDA and this uh, 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 logistic regression and this LDA, KNN, CURT, NB all are the same execu execution, executing time uh, taken and this SBM is slightly uh, higher than this four and these are the confusion matrix of the uh, different models we have included here now coming to the future research, uh, we are planning to integrate the ensemble techniques like the stacking or boosting or we are also planning to implement uh, this work in the deep learning models such as neural network and we also expand um, uh, our uh, data set, we will explain our data set like uh, with a defined micro bias spaces and complex network we can consider and uh, we can enhance our work uh, with the Markov clustering algorithm and we, uh, we are planning to uh, choose the TF, TF, IDF also to enhance the insight into the cellular organizations. And now these are the references we have used in this PPT. Uh, mostly the recent, uh, uh, recent work and some are the, the uh, basic, uh, that means the uh, very meaningful uh, papers we have included. Now this is from my side. Thank you.